Hi everyone, this is Byung, one of the GSIs in Panos' FIA class. In this video, I'm going to use FactSet to screen stocks. Before we begin, why do we need to screen stocks? Well, as Panos mentioned in his class, our time is finite and there are more things to do in our life than FIA. <laughs> well, at the same time, there are thousands of securities in the market, so it's impossible for any individual to do a full FIA for thousands of securities. But fundamentally, we are not interested in every single stocks. We only care about those stocks that are potentially underpriced or overpriced relative to fundamental value, right? So that we can make profit um, either through the appreciation or price corrections. So in this video, we are going to use FactSet as a tool and apply valuation techniques that we learned so far to limit the universe, eligible universe of stocks from thousands to a couple hundreds. Then we can kind of pick a couple of interesting stocks to conduct a full FIA. Now, uh, what you see on, on your screen is the um, kind of the beginning page of the fact set. Right? We are, today we are primarily using um, screening option in the middle tab here. Um, if you don't see it in in your computer, don't panic. Click this add a new tab um, and it should appear in one of these options. But given I already have those options, it doesn't appear in, in my tab. So once you have this screening option, click it. Then we are, go we are at the universal screening tab. Given that this is our first time screening stocks, uh, we are not going to build it from scratch, although we can, but I'm going to use Panos' pre-built template. So here, if you click open and go to client directory, and let's look for the file by uh, sorting by the date modified. So do just double click the column. And you will see FI screen 0306 2019. That's the file we want, and open. Okay, so it's it's loading um, all the parameters that are already saved, so it takes some time to refresh. So um, while it's loading, I'm gonna show you a couple of functionality. So first, you'll see select criteria. So that's gonna be one of our um, primary filters. And then also we can format our outputs uh, however we want, right? And then in the end, we will see the results, which will display list of securities um, they, that satisfy our filters. So before we review the companies, I'm going to show you what uh, the kind of basic criteria that Panos added. So go to select criteria and scroll down. You will see that Panos limited eligible security to those that trade in the U.S. exchanges. And we are only interested in common stocks, right? So this L9 and L10 basically captures those companies. And then from uh, L1 to L, uh, L8, we, we placed eight industry filters. So we are only interested in this specific uh, industry, ranging from consumer durables all the way to um, Retails and technology. Why? Well, given that we are at the Bay Area, we are more familiar with um, kind of tech stocks, right? And um, consumer durables, we almost always buy those goods, right? Um, so we are more familiar with the uh, the companies that belong to belongs to these industries. One caveat here is the this logic option here. So when you modify this screen or come up with your own screen, make sure, make sure to um, place industry option within the parentheses and do the or. This is because security belongs to one specific industry. So if you do end option here, you're not gonna pick up all those industries, right? So only if you do or option, then you can get in, uh, companies that belongs to this multiple industry, right? Okay. Before I talk about any formatting 
let's look at the results. So here you see list of companies and um, different columns, right? So select criteria, we import some of the basic filters. Next, we are going to uh, place more advanced filters based on the market cap and some of the quality measures that we already learned in class and uh, some of the other kind of fundamentals and market uh, ratios. All right. So first uh, is the size, size of the company. So if you click uh, the column, then you can see the formula, right? So it says market, market cap greater than 1 billion. So if you click this specific arguments here, you can actually see the description, right? And yeah, it's basically the size of the company and it's in millions. So we are basically limiting to uh, companies that are kind of big enough, right? Big enough companies. Why? Because uh, it's kind of easier to collect information relative to small and micro cap stocks, right? So that's the reason why we kind of limit to one stock greater than one billion. Next comes um, three valuation heuristics that we already learned in class. Price to book, right? So if you don't remember uh, the definition, you can also click Again, the formula and read the description, right? And trailing PE that is using um, prior 12 month of earnings and forward PE, right, for the uh, upcoming earnings. So these three variables effectively captures the cheapness dimension uh, of each stocks, right? All right, so the next set of variables will try to capture um, the quality dimension of securities. Quality matters, um, obviously, because we want, uh, we want a high quality stocks that are temporarily underpriced. We don't want any junk stocks that, that are just cheap, right? So we want, we want to identify high quality stocks um, at a relatively cheap price. ROE uh, is trying to proxy for the profitability, um, so we want high ROE. But we also want to look at financial leverage because um, this ROE, high ROE, could come from uh, financial engineering. Right? So we want we want to make sure that this is rather organic growth, not uh, financial engineering. Next variable is accounting quality. So again, if you click the column, you can see the exact definition. So here. We define accounting quality as uh, operating cash flow over gross income. So what we are trying to capture here is that um, our gross profit uh, is mainly driven by uh, the cash flow, not the uh, accounting accruals. Next is the sales growth. And um, of course, we want higher sales growth relative to the last year. So. The combination of these four measures uh, effectively captures the quality of the securities and a uh, combination of first three, price booked and price, price to equity, captures the cheapness. But you'll still see other measures such as volatility, uh, short difficulties, right? Um, so volatility is the past three years of stock returns, which proxies for the uh, stock's risk. The higher the volatility, higher the risk. And short difficulties. Well, the formula here is not intuitive, but basically this captures the difficulty in borrowing stocks uh, to short sell. Right? So the higher the score, um, uh, the more difficult to borrow the stocks. So we have these um, multiple variables, but it's quite hard to um, look at individually. So what Panos did is creating a score a composite score that summarizes these uh, multiple variables, right? Um, so let me show you how to wh what goes into in this score, and if you want to create kind of alternative alternative setup score, this is how how to do it. So go to format format results, um, and let's go to rank. Okay. So here. Um, I, US rank two, we renamed as, as FIA score, 
But effectively, this is the screen, existing screen uh, that Panos created. Okay, so we are leaving our market cap because market cap, uh, we, we are just using it uh, to filter the large cap stocks, right? Um, it's not part of the composite score. So here, um, we see the inputs of this uh, score, price book, all the way to short the ticker tickers. And what really matters here is the order, right? So for the measure of cheapness, price to book, price to earnings, and uh, forward price to earnings, we want smaller values, right? Uh, smaller the better for this, these three uh, measures. And ROE, of course, the larger the value, higher the profit, it's, it's better. And uh, for financial leverage, we want um, kind of lower uh, financial leverage we, because we want organic growth. And of course, we want higher accounting quality um, and higher sales growth, so the largest value uh, ranked first. And we want low volatility stocks um, and stocks that are easier to borrow. So these, for these two variables, we want small, smaller value being ranked one, right? So once we have this order, right, next is the set of the uh, option for this composite score. So in, if you look at uh, Panos's option, basically he chose deciles, right? Rather than individual ranking, because it's even harder to interpret. Uh, we want to form like um, decile 10 different portfolios using all these um, ratings, right? And we are equally weighting um, 10 different variables. And that's how we basically came up with this score, right? But if you want to kind of replicate this ranking, you can do that, and let me show you. So if you click here, create new rank, um, then you, you see um, these different variables, right? So I, I chose 10 different values. I'm going to edit here. And I'm going to repeat, right? So if you double click the order options, I want smaller value of the chiefness, um, higher profitability, uh, low, low leverage, high accounting quality, high sales growth, um, low volatility, and stocks that are easy to borrow, right? And then um, I'm, I'm gonna use the same decile options and weighted average of those deciles, and okay, 10, right, weighted average, right. Just to uh, just make sure to check um, if everything looks good. And then we'll place add rank. And of course, it's recalculating to reflect the new ranking system. Um, so here, this is pretty messy because first, um, we are creating individual rank for each column, each, each variable. So um, given that this is too, uh, uh, excessive information, I'm gonna first highlight all these columns um, and then right click to hide, okay? So basically I end up with rank three, uh, the new rank that I created, which is 100% uh, identical to uh, what Panos created, right? So this is how you create a composite score ranking. All right, next. If you go to the uh, group tab within format results, then you can see that Panos already grouped securities by sector and then industry. This is useful to see um, stocks that are within the same industry, um, allowing us to compare um, stocks that are in the same industry. Okay. So, okay, here are the set of our industries. Right. And let me just focus on uh, a couple of firms that everyone is familiar with. So under consumer durables, uh, let's go to motor vehicles. 
Then we have some of the familiar names, Tesla, Ferrari, Ford, uh, Mazda, and GM, right? And, and basically, um, you can look at the relative rank of these uh, companies, right? And you can, you can either pick some of the interesting companies that we like to do a full uh, FIA analysis. Let's also take a look at uh, some of the other um, tech industry. So for instance, if you go to technology uh, services and um, internet IT technology services. Oh, no. Uh, it's actually internet software and services, right? So here, again, we see uh, some familiar names such as Snap, Yelp, um, scrolling down and alphabet google and facebook right? and uh, twitter so just uh, uh, look at the results for, for within each industry and see how uh, the ranking is being displaced and you can also look at the individual components of those rankings by now uh, i cover some of the basics of screening using factset some could argue that this is a bit too simple because we are only using 10 variables to limit the securities. Yes, it is simple, but it, it is still a very powerful tool and it's highly correlated with uh, what professionals are actually doing in the industry. But keep in mind uh, that this, is, for most of you, this is the first time doing the stock screening. So the goal of this video is to, um, to make you familiar with a uh, fact set and so on um, how to apply some of the basic criteria and adding um, filters, right? And I strongly encourage you to add other variables um, to play with. So for instance, if you click this um, browse for formula, um, you can see all different types of um, variables. Uh, you can look at, for instance, uh, some of the ESG scores, um, other like financial data, right? There's so many other variables that we can include. Or you can directly search in, in this formula tab here. So for instance, I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna look at dividend uh, yield there. And um, add new. Then the results are basically reflecting this new column that I added here, dividend yield, okay? But not, not all the firms are paying dividends, so it's normal to expect some of the missing data. Um, we can also look at, um, say, price to sales. Right? So the whole point is that feel free to add more variables and um, well, be sure to update the rank as well right, to reflect these two additional um, variables. Um, lastly, you can save, save your version of the screening using the save button, but please do save as, right? So don't overwrite Panos' uh, template, uh, otherwise your, your colleagues will have very hard time um, uh, watching this video, okay? So click save as, and um, you can feel free to save it under your personal directory, right? But I'm not going to save my version of um, the screen today. Uh, I think that's it for this video. So if you have any questions, um, as always, feel free to reach out to Panos or um, the GSIs. Thank you.